Hey everyone, Matthew Dale here to help you play better, sound great, and understand more. And I just found an interesting video that came into my YouTube feed. Uh, Tim Henson, the guitar player for Polyphia, was featured uh, on Wired doing one of those uh, Twitter Q&A type of things. And there's a couple of really great nuggets of information that we can pick up from this video that I'd like to explore. Now, if you're not too terribly familiar with Tim Henson, he is the guitar player for Polyphia. He's also an incredibly clean and technical guitar player that's really created his own unique style. So let's check out a couple of clips and see what's going on. Do I need to know music theory in order to write songs? I think a lot of the best songwriters of all time probably didn't know any music theory. I myself do not know a good amount of music theory. And if you have any melody in your head and you write it down, you're writing music right there. So now you do not need to know music theory at all to write songs. All right, let's just stop there for a second because this is probably one of the most common uh, questions that guitar teachers or music teachers here is, do I need music theory? Or do I need, need music theory to play guitar solos? Do I need music theory to learn guitar? Uh, in this case, do I need music theory to write songs? And Tim Henson is not incorrect in saying that no, you don't need music theory to sit down and write a song. But that's also kind of like saying, do I need to know mechanical engineering to build a car? And while that answer might also be a no if you spend enough time with enough materials in you know your garage or workshop just hammering it out trial and error you might eventually happen upon something that drives like a car but understanding a bit about mechanical engineering is also going to make things easier you can get to the car faster and that's kind of how i think of music theory now, notice later on as he's giving this answer, he also says that I'm not completely aware or I, I don't really know that much about music theory. But throughout most of this video, he's using music theory terms to talk about what he's doing. You're able to do power chords, which is the root, the fifth, and the octave. By definition, the power chord is gonna have your root, your fifth, and an octave. In this case, we're just gonna take out the octave and just do the root and the fifth. I kind of just arpeggiated the chords in different rhythmic sequences. An arpeggio is a broken up chord. First chord with a quarter note and then arpeggiating with eighth notes. And then the second chord arpeggiating with syncopation. One of my favorite scales to practice fairly metal sounding is the harmonic minor scale. Right, let's just start with the minor scale. The harmonic minor scale, you're going to raise the seventh, so that's gonna Notice he's talking about uh, notes in terms of numbers, and he's talking about like harmonic minor scale. He's, he's talking about various other like techniques, like arpeggios and stuff like that. He also has a little bit of rhythm knowledge in there, quarter notes, eighth notes, syncopation, that sort of thing. And that kind of begs the question, so then if that's not music theory, then, or if that isn't a lot of music theory, then what is music theory in his head? And what is music theory in our own heads? And I think a misnomer that we see a lot of times or a misnomer that I've seen teaching students myself is that, okay, everything that I understand right now isn't music theory and music theory is everything that I don't understand, which then that would also become, do I need to understand the things I don't understand to be better at what I'm doing? And more often than not, we make music theory out to be way more complicated than it needs to be. We also make it way more mysterious than it needs to be. It's neither of the two. Music theory is just a way to communicate musical ideas in our everyday speaking language. If I didn't have a guitar and you didn't have whatever instrument you have in front of you, where I could say, okay, well, yeah, my lick is something like that, um, and then we just went through and hammered out those notes so we could be playing the same things. I could also just say I'm playing a harmonic minor scale down from the fifth, skipping up to the second, back to the root, and then down and ending on the low fifth. That's a much more efficient way of explaining what I'm doing. Notice it's not guitar-centric. I'm talking about music. I'm not talking about string names or fret notes or anything like that. So really, the main idea of music theory is two things. One is counting. Counting is huge. It's 90% of music theory. If you can count and count your way through notes, you can be a master of music theory. And the other thing is putting definitions on top of the things that you're counting. By definition, the power chord is going to have your root, your fifth, 
and an octave. A harmonic minor scale, you're going to raise the seventh. Case in point, the first thing that we really want to count our way through is the major scale. So rather than this E major scale being E, F sharp, G sharp, A, B, C sharp, D sharp, and E, we want to quickly get to a, a place where we can count that through as one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and one, and maybe do that in a couple of various ways on the guitar. So this is a E major scale position. I'm playing this across the strings in one centrally located area. I could play that horizontal across one string as well. One, two, three, half step to four, five, six, seven, half step back to one. Both are really good methods to learn how to place the major scale and then numbers on the guitar neck. And then expanding from there, the minor scale just means we take those numbers and we flat three, flat six, and flat seven. One, two, flat three, four, five, flat six, flat seven and one, and then just as Tim Henson explained a second ago, with some music theory knowledge, harmonic minor is a minor scale with a natural seven, or a raised seven. One, two, flat three, four, five, flat six, raise seven, and then back to one. And that's the sound of harmonic minor. That's counting our way through the notes and then placing a definition of what that formula is. Major scale, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Minor scale, one, two, flat, three, four, five, flat, six, flat, seven. Harmonic minor scale, one, two, flat, three, four, five, flat, six, seven. That is the absolute crux and the most important thing to understand about music theory. And if you can start this process of counting your way through notes, notes, things like chords, whether they be triads or seven chords or bigger chords with added tensions, modes and more advanced scales, all of these things are going to become a lot easier to understand. And I think the proof is kind of in the pudding as Tim Henson is explaining, no, you don't need music theory. You don't need to understand music theory to write a great song. But then as a high level musician is also explaining these various musical and guitar techniques by use of music numbers and music theory concepts. Is it more important to learn how to read music or to practice learning by ear? I guess it really depends on what your goals and music is going to be. If you want to play in an orchestra, probably need to learn how to read music. If you want to play in a band, it's probably good to practice learning by ear. I personally think that learning by ear is a bit more important as, you know, if you're thrown into a performance with other musicians and there is no sheet music playing by ear, you'd be doing it no problem. This one's huge and he absolutely hits the nail on the head uh, with this one. Learning to play music by ear is far more important than learning to play music by sight, whether that be reading notes on a staff or yes, by tab. But sometimes I don't think that we as guitar players fully realize the processes that are happening as we are reading our way through tab. As we're learning something by ear, we have to constantly compare what we're trying to learn or what we're trying to play to things that we've already played or things that we know how to play on the instrument. But when we just play with sight, we kind of bypass all that analytical stuff. Now, certainly if you're a really good reader, um, you can start playing music faster. And that's really the point of reading music in an orchestral setting is, okay, here's the music. We're at rehearsal. We need to do this fast and efficient play what's on the sheet, here we go. But for learning and for practicing on our own time, we want to take the extra time and the extra steps to learn stuff by ear. If you start with ear training and you start trying to learn things by ear, you can pick up how to play the sheet a lot easier. This is very similar to the way we learn our language. We don't start communicating by just reading what is on a page that someone gave us to read right? We start by making nonsense noises with our mouth, with our instrument, and learning how, the, how that is communicating with other people. It's not until much later on that we actually start to try to read the sounds that we are already using and already listening to. So we start by listening and then speaking, and then we learn how to read the things that we already know how to hear and to say much later on. I think music should be the same way. How do people freaking learn a song by ear? If you can hear the melody in your head, if you can sing the melody, you can play it by ear. A good exercise is ear training, so sitting down with a piano or any instrument, sing a note and play the note back. Um, or bum. And also, like, 
playing along with your favorite uh, songs. If I wanted to think of Careless Whisper by George Michael, I would sing it. So this is some pretty awesome advice for ear training. And again, a, probably a super common question. Okay, how do you learn things by ear? And even if you're not a singer or even if you don't want to be a singer, singing the parts that you want to play really helps you internalize both the notes, the frequencies, how those notes move around, and the part itself, meaning the rhythm and the direction the notes are going. <laughs> And I would even extend this to say that if you want to learn songs by ear, the best thing you can do is try to learn and sing the bass line. If you can sing the path that the bass is playing or the part that the bass is playing, then usually you can learn what the chords are from there. And it's a great way to start building the ear training muscle. So I hope that you've enjoyed some of these words of wisdom from Tim Henson. Uh, and I hope that it really kind of shines some light on the importance of having a really good understanding of fundamental music theory. And by that, like I mentioned earlier, counting in just some basic definitions with a huge emphasis on counting. Even though he would claim that he doesn't know much about music theory, he still has the ability to count his way through music and understand more about music that way. And I think that's something we can all take away from that. If you would like a more complete understanding of fundamental and basic music theory, then download my Essential Music Theory Cheat Sheet. It's everything that I've been talking about in this video and so much more. You can find it linked in the description box below. My name is Matthew Dale. I'm here to help you play better, sound great, and understand more. And I'll see you in the next video.